On a recent video, a viewer asked if we could make a video on how to dynamically allocate memory for an array of strings in C. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to dynamically allocate memory for an array of strings. So if we wanted to dynamically allocate space for a single string on the heap, it would look something like this. We'd say car star string is equal to, and we would call malloc, and we would say size of car times length, where here we're pretending that length is the length of the character array that we want to create to store the string that we're going to store into it. And then size of car is the number of bytes that it takes to store a character. So basically we're going to allocate space for this many characters. And then string would be a pointer to that dynamically allocated block of memory on the heap. Now in the case of an array of strings, we're basically taking this concept one step forward where we're going to have not a pointer to a character. We're going to have a pointer to a pointer to a character and we could call it strings. And what we're going to dynamically allocate space for initially is not some number of characters. We're going to dynamically allocate space for some number of pointers to characters. So really, we're going to dynamically allocate memory in two steps, basically. At first, what we're going to do is dynamically allocate enough space to store enough pointers to characters on the heap. Then in the second step, we're going to dynamically allocate enough space on the heap to store each individual character array for each individual string. So we'll go over it with an example. The first thing I'll do is include a couple libraries to help us. I'm going to include the string.h library because it has helpful functions like the string length function and string copy function that we can use. I'm also going to include the stdlib.h library because that has the malloc, calloc, and free functions that are used to dynamically allocate memory in C. So next I'll make a variable called total and total is going to store the total number of strings that we're going to dynamically allocate space for. And I'll ask the user for that number of strings. So here we'll say printf enter number of strings and we'll prompt the user to enter the number. And then we'll store the number they enter into total using scanf. And now we can allocate space for this number of pointers to characters. So we can say strings is equal to malloc total times size of car star. So what we're doing is allocating space for strings to point to this number of pointers to characters. So strings is going to have a pointer to some block of memory that's able to store this number of pointers to characters. And each one of these pointers to a character is going to be a pointer to our dynamically allocated character arrays that are going to store the actual string itself. So next, what we're going to have to do is actually ask the user for each string. As we receive each string, we're going to dynamically allocate space for it. So we'll make a buffer to store each string that the user enters. So we'll say car buffer. And what we'll do is give buffer a very large size because it's really only temporary. We're just basically using it to receive the strings and we'll actually dynamically allocate space for only the amount of characters we need to store each individual string after we've actually received it from the user. So here we'll say number define buffer size and we'll say 4,096 bytes. So that's a very large amount of space to store the input from the user. We'll also create a variable called length and length is going to be used to keep track of the length of each string that we accept from the user. Now we're going to use F gets to accept strings from the user. When we use F gets, we're going to actually give it standard in as the stream from which to input the next string. Because the standard input stream is used for scanf, and because after we enter the integer here, we hit enter, there's technically going to be a new line character on the standard input stream. 
So to flush that character out, we'll use this technique here. We'll say while get car doesn't equal the new line character. So what this is going to do is keep on getting characters up until a new line character is encountered, which is going to have the effect of flushing the standard input stream, which makes it safe for us to use fgets. So now we'll actually have to ask the user for each individual string. We'll receive it using fgets and we'll store it into the buffer. And then we'll allocate space for each individual string on the heap. So we'll put a new line in first, and then we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than total, i plus plus. So we're having this counter go from zero up into total by one, because total is the number of strings that we want to create on the heap. And then we'll prompt the user for the string. So we'll say printf enter string percent d and we'll say here i plus one so we can ask them enter string one enter string two enter string three and so on next we'll use f gets so we'll say f gets buffer buffer size stdin for standard input stream so what we're doing here is accepting input from the user on standard input which is going to be the terminal or the console by default and it's going to be stored into buffer up to buffer size amount of characters. And the reason again, why we had to flush any characters from the standard input stream, especially the new line character, is that if we didn't do that, there would still be a hanging new line character on the standard input stream from scanf. And in that case, for the first string, f gets would see that new line on the standard input stream, and it would basically store a blank string into buffer it actually wouldn't even pause for user input. So that's why we have to flush the standard input stream. Once we've done that once though, we can just use f gets like this and we're good. So that will give us the string. Now to get the length of the string, we'll say length is equal to str len buffer. So the string length function will give us the length of the string that the user entered and that was stored into buffer, not including the null terminator character. And we'll store that length into length because we're going to use it to dynamically allocate space for the string that we're going to store on the heap. So one thing we're going to do is with f gets, if I were to enter the string abc and hit enter, then buffer would store a string that looks like this, abc backslash n for the new line character. So f gets will actually pick up and store the new line character that the user enters when they hit enter to terminate their input. F gets will actually store that enter character, which is effectively a new line character into the buffer itself. We don't really want that. We don't really want that last new line character. So what we're gonna do is actually move up the null terminator by one in buffer to just sort of eliminate this new line character. So we'll say buffer at length minus one is equal to backslash zero here. And this is the special null terminator character that terminates a string. And what we're doing is we're moving it up one character in the string, which effectively puts it here. And then the string gets terminated without that new line character being there. So next what we'll do is actually dynamically allocate space for this character array on the heap. So we'll say strings i is equal to malloc length times size of car. So remember here that strings is not a pointer to a character. It actually has on the heap an array for storing pointers to characters. That's what it's storing is an array of pointers to characters. And what we're saying here is take the pointer to a character at index i and have it point to this block of memory that we're allocating. And we're allocating a block of memory that's gonna be large enough to store this number of characters, length number of characters. Now, normally, if we're allocating space for a character array, we might have something like this, length plus one, to account for the null terminator. In this case here, we've actually already shaved off 
one character in our string, that new line character. So we can actually just use length and length will include the null terminator and we're actually okay. And next what we'll do is copy the string from the buffer to this newly dynamically allocated space. So we'll say str copy, we'll call the string copy function and we'll copy into strings at i what's in the buffer now. And that'll actually copy the string into that space that we've just dynamically allocated. So now we've done it. And now we could actually loop through this array of strings and print out each string just to verify they're there. So we'll say printf backslash n resulting strings array colon, put on some new lines. And we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than total, i plus plus. And we'll print out each individual string. So we'll say printf strings at percent d is equal to percent s new line i and strings at i. So we'll put the index here and we'll put the string itself as well. And we'll also just throw in one more new line on the end there. Okay, so we'll save and compile and run this and we'll see how she goes. So build succeeded, it says enter number of strings, we'll say five. Enter string one, I'll say ABC space one, two, three. Enter string two, I'll say this is a test. Enter string three, I'll say I'm from Canada. Enter string four, I'll say this is another test. And enter string five, I'll say it's sunny outside. And the resulting strings array looks like this. We have those strings stored into the array of strings there. So this is how we could dynamically allocate space for an array of strings in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.